Well, good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully everyone is having an amazing day. My name is Reggie Hammond. I'm a managing partner for York Crescendo, and I am excited to introduce to you the executive director for the Metro Atlanta Land Bank, uh, formerly the uh, Fulton County City of Atlanta Land Bank Authority, for those of you that have been around the organization for a while. We're excited about the webinar we're presenting to you today as a part of a great series that we've been having around um, this lunch and learn series uh, for, for, for the land bank that gives you an opportunity to learn more about the land bank, how it operates, um, and how you can be involved as a stakeholder of a range of different types. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Chris Norman, who's gonna get us started and talk us through this topic we have queued up today uh, for those interested in acquiring a land bank property. And our focus today will be around Sheriff Marshall Deeds. Chris, take it away. Thank you, Reggie. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Glad you could take some time out of your day to, to join us in this Lunch and Learn series of topics of interest about the land bank. Uh, and today, as Reggie said, we're gonna talk a little bit about acquiring property. Uh, our program director, Terika Bashir, is on the call, but we're just having some technical difficulties with getting her integrated into the presentation. So unfortunately, I will take up her a portion of the presentation, but she will be back on the next one as we move forward. So, uh, so let's just dive right in. Uh, and just format wise, what we do uh, before I get started is that we're going to have a, just a general conversation for about uh, 30 minutes or so, 25 minutes or so, and then we'll open it up for questions. And then we'll ask for you to put your questions into the chat box. Uh, and then we'll spend a little bit of time uh, after 1230 to kind of talk to everybody. So, um, all right. So let's go right into the presentation. So I'd like to get everybody grounded again. We've had this, this webinar already about what is a land bank. But I'd just like to ground people in terms of who we are and what we do as we get started. So, so land banks are public and nonprofit entities basically created by governments to, uh, you know, to acquire, manage, maintain, and basically redeploy property in their respective communities. And typically the properties are these underutilized, vacant, blighted, tax delinquent type properties. And so that's that's basically what we do. So um, one thing I always like to point out is the land bank is a tool, you know, it's part of a, a greater toolkit. So we work in conjunction with other agencies, other entities within the governmental space, as well as the private sector space to bring these properties to, to, to bear. Uh, we, focus, we focus on all types of properties, so residential, commercial, industrial, and green space. Historically, it's been residential, and we still, that is the predominant uh, amount of property that we deal with. We basically focus on that. We, we aren't in the development business per se. We're legally allowed to do that, but we don't do that. We typically rely on our partners, uh, such as folks on the phone on this webinar that are interested in acquiring and developing to do, to do that last leg of the journey. Uh, we don't do eminent domain. Uh, we can participate as a recipient, but we cannot initiate. Uh, and then land banks, again, you know, we exist because we're moving into areas or situations where the market hasn't cleared property or there's some significant administrative legal barriers out there that just need to be dealt with and the land bank might just be the better entity to do that. So, so this comes from grounding of that. You know, our whole point of existence is to remedy all these bad conditions of, of basically eliminating uh, non-tax producing blighted uh, vacant abandoned property. Uh, so ultimately, you know, we, we joke and say, it's, it's the goal is to work ourselves out of business in which we basically cure all of these issues. And so we've been working on that since 1991, so clearly there's still work to be done. Uh, we also lastly have this, this ability to extinguish pass-through tax liens. Uh, there's no other entity uh, in the state that can do that aside from the courts. And so we're actually able to help clear title of the property by clearing delinquent taxes uh, that have not been sold that still exist on the tax commissioner's books. So just wanna kind of do a quick run by with who we are and kind of our mission. So let's, let's start talking about the topic of the day. So how do we, so I wanna ground people in how do we acquire property before we talk about how can you acquire property? So these are the methodologies in which we get property. People I think are, are still a little gray about how we actually come into possession of property. So, so property can be donated to the land bank. That happens to us. It has happened over the years and we anticipate it will continue to happen. So if you, if anyone's a private citizen, private corporation, wants to donate property, we can evaluate it for its uh, 
suitability for the land bank and take that into inventory. We can buy property just like anybody else in the, in the marketplace. So assuming we have the funding available for the transaction, we can go out and we can basically enter into a negotiation arm's length and buy property just like anyone else. And we have done that before and brought property, brought it into inventory. Uh, Ingram non-judicial tax foreclosure. That's the non-judicial tax foreclosure is currently what our tax commissioner uh, does in which they take properties and it's just a regular auction that you see on the street. Uh, the land bank can't participate in those auctions and, and we can buy those properties on the steps. There are some special powers for the land bank in terms of our ability to participate in those, those sales, uh, but we can do that. We just have to have the funds available to pay like a lot of other folks. Uh, the non-judicial lien foreclosures, those are non-tax liens that basically are being foreclosed on and, and we can actually be the recipient of those properties that are acquired. There's actually a project that's ongoing right now and we'll have more information about that later. Uh, we're doing it in conjunction with the city of Atlanta where they're, they're foreclosing on some liens and we're taking those properties into inventory for additional redevelopment. So that creates inventory. Uh, and then also the public agencies that started us, uh, the city and the county can actually, if they have surplus property, they can transfer it to the land bank authority uh, basically without an RFP. So this, this gives them the ability to transfer to an entity that has a lot of nimbleness to it. Uh, and so we have done that in the past and we anticipate doing that in the future. And in particular, one thing we're gonna talk about today are these share for Marshall deeds, which was a mass conveyance uh, of property interest to the land bank uh, several years ago. And then also there's a new law on the books that came on board about two, two and a half years ago for blight eminent domain. We have not used that in the city, but of Atlanta, they've used it in Savannah, I believe. That's just another way of a public entity for conveying property to the land bank. And then also just want to point out this last one was next to last, criminal seizure and conveyance. So if there's a situation where you have the DA, district attorney, or the US attorney, or any other type of uh, legal intermediary, if they take property as part of a criminal seizure, that property can be transferred to a land bank for future development. And we've actually partnered with uh, the US attorney on this, that exact type scenario. Uh, the last bucket here that's not available, I just wanna point out that this is, a, this is potential available to land banks, our land bank, but it's also used by land banks across the state, is in room judicial tax foreclosure. So you see before I talked about non-judicial, this is ju judicial. Uh, we are not currently doing that in Fulton County. I do wanna point out that there is a significant difference there in terms of the non-judicial properties will take you about 24 months to gain control of those properties, whereas the in-room judicial will actually take you about seven months. So, uh, so we're not doing that unfortunately here in, in, in Fulton County, uh, but it is available in other parts of the state. So just wanna make sure we're all clear on how we get property into the land bank. So when we have property, so how do we get rid of it? How do we how do we convey it? So these are primarily the ways that we convey property. So we have applications. So, so some properties we say, uh, they're property specific applications that are online. So we've moved to the online methodology that most people use nowadays. And you'll see this when you go into our inventory list and on our website and you can click and we'll talk about this more and you can click into the, the application. These applications will tell us more about your, give you some background information about who you are and your ability to, to do the transaction. RFQs or requests for qualifications. What these are done, these are basically program documents that are distributed at a specific time and anyone who's interested can apply. And what you do, you create a pool of qualified buyers or which would be corporations or, or entities based on the type of deal that's being done. And then these entities would have the opportunity to bid on properties in a pool. Then we have RFPs, requests for proposals. These are property specific. And once you get into the property, the document, just like the RFQ document, there'll be certain specific criteria that's required to complete these, uh, these documents. So we'll be asking for certain things uh, and then you'll have to submit that as part of your qualification process. And so, and in terms of RFP can be used in conjunction with an RFQ. So say for instance, you've created a pool of buyers or entities on an RFQ. Sometimes we'll open up an RFP just to that pool. So they can be used separately or in conjunction with RFQ, RFPs, RFQs rather. They market sell. 
what we we have started doing, and this is the first year we've done that, is that we now intend to have periodic, either a surplus property sales once or twice a month, and then you'll be able to come in and buy property just like you would any other market property on MLS, and then uh, this property be sold typically at a market price, uh, and then well the, the caveat to these is that they will typically be unrestricted in terms of what they are, uh, what they go for, and there'll be no back end restrictions typically on those, those properties. So, uh, so I'm going to just keep moving. So the next one. So we're gonna get into a situation, here's a hypothetical of, we have someone, Mary. So Mary Smith has come to the land bank and she's interested in saying, hey, you guys have some properties, I might be interested in developing some. And so we say, great, uh, why don't you start doing your investigation? So Mary can be, she can do this as an individual, she can do this as a corporate entity, uh, like a, a for-profit entity, or she might want to do it as a nonprofit. It all depends. So all these are open. So how would Mary proceed if she is interested in buying property from the land bank? So, so she wants to find out, well, what do we have? So she says, well, I need to see what you guys have in your inventory. So we actually have an inventory listing on our website that is here via the metroatlantalandbank.org website. So Mary decides to go to, to the website. Um, and, oh, all right, so hopefully this will work. Let's just make sure you guys can see. So I've taken you to our website, right? So here's the website. And so once you're into the website, it's easy to, to navigate through. Uh, you'll see all the other types of things, the programs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but what you wanna do is just navigate to uh, finding the um, inventory. So if you just wanna view properties, you click on to the website. So when you click onto the website, you'll see an inventory listing like this. And it'll say, find a property. Uh, and, and so I'll just click here on view all properties. And what you'll see is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, what you'll see is a listing of all the properties that are in the land bank's inventory. One thing to be clear about, all of these properties are not available for purchase. The point of this exercise shows you what we do have in the inventory. So we work with partners often that basically have properties that we hold on their behalf that will ultimately be used uh, by them for a purpose they've designated. But what I want to show you here is that we have properties here. And so for instance, when you see, you're looking here on the right side, I see land banking and other thing, types of things. Uh, so some, you see Janice Drive is available. You see uh, James P. Brawley is reserved. When it shows reserved and it's land bank, it's not available for purchase. The ones that are available for acquisition will show available. And the thing about is you, you're curious, like how do I figure out what do, what do I want? You know, where can I go? So once you're into this, this arena, you can click on by street, you can click on by neighborhood. We'll have all the neighborhoods listed and it'll pull up all the properties there. You can drill down by MPUs. Uh, you, can, you can do by type of property. So you can use all of these. You can even do status. Uh, so you can use all of these things to create a filter. And once you do these filters, you can export that list that you have created. So we have a lot of flexibility. The ability for you guys to see what we have is fairly straightforward. And you can do this basically uh, any time that, uh, that you would like. So, so just wanted to show you, so this is where Mary would go, right? So Mary says, um, so that's what Mary does when she clicks on there and she goes to our website. So once she gets into that, she said, okay, she's done her filters. She's kind of looked through and she said, these are the things that I want to, to, to pursue. <clears throat> then she says, okay, well, here are my options. RFQs, right? I've talked about that before and I've told you what they are. Typically RFQs are restricted to nonprofit or for-profit developers that have financial and operational capacity to finish a job. We typically do not open these to individuals uh, that are speaking owner-occupied owner -occupied houses. So typically if you see an RFQ, 
that has specific questions and requirements that basically make us sure that you satisfy a minimum level of requirements. We do currently do not have any RFQs that are active right now. We do anticipate having some active later this year, second quarter, third quarter. So just keep visiting the website and we will note those. But if you're interested, you can also send us an email and we will put you on our notice list. RFPs, uh, these RFPs are open to specific properties. So the RFP will typically say, this RFP is for 123 Main Street only, and you can basically respond based on the criteria we lay out. We don't have any active RFPs either at this time. However, we do anticipate they would have more active RFPs. And when I'm saying there'll be more active RFPs and RFQs is because we anticipate adding additional property to the inventory, uh, several hundred pieces of property. And so you'll be able to view those properties via uh, the website. And market purchase. Again, market purchase, you can buy property arms length with us. Uh, and we, we basically have already, we just finished our surplus property sale uh, late last year. So we don't have any active right now. But again, those would be fee simple sale of properties to individuals. Now think about this market purchase, just to point out, these are for individuals, these would be for corporations, LLCs, et cetera, and all of that. Then we take this to the next one. We have Sheriff and Marshall deeds. So these are vacant lots that are basically available for new construction. So we have these. So Mary says, okay, great. I think this looks like a good opportunity. So she wants to decide on pursuing one to 1839 Mary Moore Street. Uh, and basically this is a, if you go to the website, you know, it will show that that is available. So, so again, if we go back to our we're going back here. So if we go to the parcel, right? So I say, well, we're looking for, uh, for more and I'm searching for more. So if you look over here, it says 1839 Moore Street. It shows you where it's located, it is available, right? So when you click on this, it will tell you that this is part of our Sheriff of Marshall D Pro inventory. And you see up here, it has an apply button. So if, you, if a property is available for purchase right now, it is available via this, and you can click on apply, right? And so that's how easy it is to, to get started. So uh, let's go back to the presentation. So let's make sure you guys know what share for Marshall deeds are. So basically back in 1998 through 98 through 2001, Fulton County and the city of Atlanta conveyed over 650 share for Marshall deeds to us. These were not fee simple properties. These were basically properties where the county and the city had created lien interest in these properties, either via taxes, you know, demol demolition lien, or some other type of code of violation, some type of lien interest was created in these properties, but they never foreclosed on these properties, but they held this interest in them. These were recorded interests. So they conveyed these to the land bank authority. And since that time, we've actually conveyed the majority of these out to nonprofits, to our community development corporations, to for-profits and individuals that want to build their own house. And, and so we've done over 560 of those over this time period. And we're down to the last remaining, let's call it 80, 90 of those in the our inventory. We do have a priority. Our priority is to give them one, if a government needs it for a specific purpose, we'll designate them first. If the nonprofit, our CDCs or anybody else wants it, we'll kind of say, okay, you guys maybe get first shot. Private citizens that want to be an owner occupant, we give it to them. And then if there's a for-profit developer, then we can say, fine, nobody else wants it. The pecking order establishes that you have that opportunity. So this is a first come, first serve type situation. So depending upon where you enter, uh, that's basically how you uh, get the opportunity to purchase that. And I know that uh, the question is coming into the chat box. Um, and so I will... Um, I will look at those as we go along and get some of those at the end. Now, share from Marshall D's. So what's the purchase price? That is a, this is a set standard for everyone. is 40% of the praise value of that property. So when you wanna do that, uh, if you're interested, so what Mary has to do next is, um, I think we have it on the next slide. Okay, we'll, we'll walk it through here. So basically it's 40% of the appraised value. Mary's gonna get an appraisal on this specific property. It's gonna tell her how much it cost. So the application. So we've clicked on the application. I guys showed you where the application is and where the link is. 
So you create a login, you create a password, you're now part of our online system. This system will ask you to do several things. It will ask you to do a title search report. Why do we want you to do the title? Well, I've already told you that these particular properties have title issues, right? That it may not be completely fee simple. So we want you to do a title search so you understand who might else might be there that has a competing interest. Then we're gonna ask you for proof of funds to do your project. Let's say you say, I want this property, I wanna build a house. I wanna do this as a partnership with other people. That's great. We just want you to demonstrate that you have the capacity to do that. Give us a letter of recommendation. Have you done this before? Does anybody know any type of work you've done? Do you have partners that you're working with and you have recommendation letters for them? We want to have that. Have you thought this through? Do you have a budget? We have a budget worksheet we give to you. We just want you to fill that out. Go out and visit the property, take some photos. We want you to know exactly what you're buying, right? Uh, and then if you have a project rendering for the project, include that. And of course, appraisal report is going to be required because that establishes how much it costs. So Mary does all of this. She gathers all this information. She submits it online. Our staff, in this case, Terrico, actually pulled that. She'll review it. She'll score it. There's actually a score. And then it's forwarded to me. So I look over at the package. This is soon that Terrico says, yes, this is good to go. I'm forwarding it to Chris. Chris takes a look at it. It looks good. So then we take this and move it onto our board of directors. All property leaving the land bank has to be approved by the board. So I don't have the authority to move property. Terica doesn't have the authority to move property. The only party that can do that is the board. So then this basically, we put this on the board agenda. Mary comes to the board meeting, we review her application. We say, oh, this looks great. Here's her project. We all sign off. This is a good thing. We want to proceed. Great. So then Mary says, let's say Moore Street, you know, it was, it was $10,000 was the appraisal. It's a 40% purchase price, which means she'll, she'll owe four grand. She'll pay that money in certified funds, either via a, a money order, certified check, uh, wire, whatever is more convenient. We get the funds, we confirm the funds are good. We then provide her our deed interest to Mary. Then she moves on. More than likely, Mary's gonna have to do quiet title on that piece of property to make sure that she has clear title. So uh, this here is really just to kind of dispel some things that I know anecdotally exist. And so let's talk about that. So we don't typically provide properties via auction. So we're not a wholesaler that's, that's holding auctions in which we're just rapidly selling our properties. As, as you can tell, the way I've already talked about how we dispose of property and auction was not one of the methodologies. Aside from the surplus property sales, which we only will do once or twice a year, every other type of property is going to require some level of disclosure by the buyer. So these are not, um, flipper type sales where you come in and you can just buy property anonymously. We wanna know who you are. You have to disclose a little bit about your capacity to deliver. And so that's one thing it's for all of our properties. To do business land bank, it's gonna require disclosure. We don't really provide flipping opportunities. So if we give you a piece of property via an RFQ, via an RFP, uh, via an application, we're gonna ask you what you're gonna do with it. And there can be some expectations from us on what you're gonna create with that, right? So. There'll still be upside profit opportunities, but it's just not a blind buy, flip, and flip again type situation with the land bank authority. That's just not how we, we do business. We also do not sell tax liens. The Fulton County Tax Commissioner is the only party corporately that sells can sell a tax lien. So if you're interested in that type of business, then contact the Fulton County Tax Commissioner for interest on buying tax liens that might be outstanding on particular properties. We do not do that for our land bank. And we also do not donate properties. And we get a lot of inquiries from parties that are saying, I'm a nonprofit, you know, I have a great mission. We applaud all these missions. We love our Atlanta community and people doing great things. But typically we do not donate property. There'll be some type of a remuneration to the land bank for that property. We typically also don't, it may not be the market price. So it'd probably be some level of discounting there will be some compensation owed to the land bank to take down some properties. So I just wanted to make sure that we covered that for you guys. So this brings us now to our Q&A portion. And so if you have any questions, um, you know, we will entertain those right now. Uh, I'm looking back through our chat box here. I don't see any questions. I think I have pointed out the filter. Oh, we have a question here. So. Um, what are the benefits of buying a property through the land bank minus the property itself? 
So one of the benefits of buying a property via the land bank is that it will probably be below market cost. So if you're interested in getting property below market, but you're also willing to contribute to a particular mission that the land bank puts forth for that property, I think we're a great opportunity to, to do that. The other thing is if we have RFPs or RFQs that are active, sometimes our properties come with additional funding. So when we did the neighborhood stabilization program, for instance, uh, developers bought properties from the land bank, uh, but we also, in that situation, we conveyed them to them for not a cash outlay, but they assume our acquisition costs, but it actually came with funding under NSP. So we actually gave them rehab money for that. Now, that was a federal program, it was a pass through, and those aren't every day, but that's an additional benefit of potentially doing a business with the land bank authority. So hopefully that answers your question. Vacant lots, are vacant lots next to land bank properties are all available, automatically available to same? Uh, so, so this is a great question. So if a land bank owns a piece of property and there's another lot that's next to it, that is not owned by the land bank and the land bank does not have any special power to control it. So that is probably still owned by a private entity, a private citizen. And so for the land bank to gain control of that piece of property, you know, we would have to do, so if we go back here, and this is a great question for people to understand how government works and how we acquire property. So if you have a piece of property owned by the land bank and there's another problem piece of property next to the land bank, the only way for the land bank to gain control of that is to go through one of these methodologies. Either the owner's gonna to have to donate it to us, we're gonna to have to buy it, it's gonna to have to go through, they're outstanding taxes that were basically delinquent. There might be an opportunity for a tax foreclosure. If there was a demo lien on it that may be still outstanding, maybe there's a demo foreclosure that could occur. Uh, if it's owned by the city or county, then they can convey it to us, to the land bank. Or if there's significant criminal activity on that, maybe it's subject to some type of criminal seizure, right? So, so those are really the methodologies how the land bank can gain control of that property such that we can then move it forward to, to basically do a deal with somebody. So that's a great question, I think, for, um, uh, for you guys to, to ask. So next question, who holds the deed once the purchase is made? So just like any other real estate transaction, if you enter into a deal with the land bank, uh, we will actually, the deed will be in your name. So the land bank is out of it. So we no longer have control of the properties uh, and we have no more interest in it. So this is a bona fide transaction. The deeds are in your name. Now, when I say they may come with conditions, bear in mind that even though you may have the title in your name, there may be some deliverables, right? You may have to make um, do some type of deliverable affordable housing or some type of thing of that nature. So that would be a maybe continuing interest, but those aren't permanent. Once you satisfy your requirements, we let that go. So um, great to see my friend here from Augusta. Uh, so glad you could join. They're doing great work down there in Augusta as well. So how can an organization become a partner? So to become a partner with the land bank, typically it will be via one of these programs we laid out. So there's an RFQ opportunity, uh, there's an RFP opportunity, of the land bank to basically become a partner. If there's some special consideration that the land bank can entertain doing a direct deal uh, with someone, uh, we can do that. So we have one of those, for instance, in place right now. So the Atlanta Land Trust, which is a community land trust, is building permanently affordable housing around the Beltline. We actually have a permanent affordable pilot that's ongoing as we speak. In that, case, in that particular case, this is a unique situation they're one of the few entities or the few, the only entity at this point doing permanent affordable housing around the Beltline. So we felt it made sense for us to try to do a special partnership with them to deliver permanently affordable housing in light of the affordable housing needs for the city. So that's one case where we figured out a way to create a special program. So if you think you have an interesting uh, program and partnership uh, that may be of interest to us, you know, we urge you to bring it to our attention and we can meet with you and we can talk, talk about that. Uh, and so wanted to address that. So we do have a couple of questions here in the uh, Q&A box here. So what are your biggest, biggest challenges as a land bank? Great question. So as a land bank, land banks uh, throughout the country, there are over 200 land banks. We're the fourth oldest land bank in the United States. Some of our big challenges are uh, 
controlling, well, the funding to obtain inventory is, an, is a challenge for all land banks, okay? And so uh, we are relying on funding from our partners that created us, i.e. the city of Atlanta, uh, Fulton County, any other partners. Uh, we organically raise money. We can actually borrow money. Uh, we have other things. So some of those are the challenges for a land bank, it's basically how to acquire those types of properties uh, and to bring them under control. And, and, and so having a capital to basically to do that. And, and that basically turns into our creation of inventory, as you saw, a lot of those inventory methodologies aside from donation and surplus transfer required us as a land bank to put money out to acquire control of those properties. So it's a balancing act uh, there. So uh, we have, uh, great point here, Terika, who you know manages our share from Marshall Deeds and all these types of things. She she points out that you know again, only for share from Marshall Deeds, you will get some. You will not get fee simple title. You have some cloudy title. You need to do quiet title on that, which is basically for all that don't know what that is. It's basically a lawsuit generated by you as a property interest owner against all other potential owners in that property to basically consolidate interest into one party and that will be you. And then you would have full control of that property. Outside of share for Marshall deeds, any other property you get from the land bank will have fee simple title. There'll be no competing interest. And so you won't have to do quiet title for those others. But for share for Marshall deeds, we highly recommend it. Uh, and then great question from Aisha, is this organization only for Fulton County? So yes, we only operate within the boundaries of our creating partners, i.e the city of Atlanta. So we operate within the entire boundaries of the city of Atlanta. We used to operate within the unincorporated parts of Fulton County. But once the city of South Fulton was created, there is no more unincorporated Fulton County aside from a very small piece of Fulton Industrial Boulevard. And that is to be settled shortly between, it will either end up being in the county uh, or the city. It will either be in Fulton County, it will be either the city of South Fulton or the city of Atlanta. And so we will not operate with that. Now, there are other cities within Fulton County that can join. And so that will be, uh, so like East Point, College Park, uh, City of South Fulton, uh, Union City, all those cities are eligible to join the land bank. And we're actually in conversations with some of them to join. So we it may end up having additional cities beyond Atlanta that are part of the land bank. So on that, we're working on that as we speak. And yes, question about will this be Record it. So great question. So we are actually, if you go to our website, resources, what we are doing, we're taking all these webinars and we're basically putting them onto our website. So you can, if you miss this one, if you want to go back and you miss something, you want to rewatch it, you can go into our website, you'll be able to watch it. If you have friends, counterparts that want to view it, you'll also be able to direct them to our website, say, hey, go take a look at that. And they can view that uh, on our on our website. So I uh, wanted to share that with you. A uh, few more questions here in the chat box. Um, can real estate, so referrals. So we don't, so we don't have compensation for referrals. Um, so what we do though, is when we were in the process of acquiring a property, we will use real estate agents to acquire property and then we will pay normal commissions for that. So. Uh, so that is something that we do periodically. We typically do acquire an agent pool. So just like we do RFQs for properties, we do RFQs for vendors. Uh, and we're going to have another webinar about how do you do business with the land bank. So we don't refer, we don't do uh, client, uh, compensation for that. So, so sorry uh, about that. So I think that was the last chat question. So I'm going to look back in our Q&A box here. And just see a shout out. Um, so I think, let me just see here. Um, okay. So I am making sure that I'm not missing any of the questions here. And I'm just checking them off as we go down. And thanks for the the kind words that people put into the chat. And uh, okay, so so now let's, um, oh, let me just see one more. All right, so 
Are there any more questions? You know, I'll pause for a moment. If you have any more questions you want to ask, this is a great time to put it into the either the Q&A box or the chat box. You know, we are into the Q&A portion. We try to keep these fairly clean and, and quick so people kind of can get in, learn some things and, and get back out. So I don't see any questions here in the chat box. So uh, we'll move on to our next slide here. So feedback is great. When you do these types of things, these are unique. This is new for us and we wanna get feedback. So if you could do this, per this slide, uh, take a moment uh, to answer two questions in our chat box. On a scale of zero to 10, uh, with 10 being the highest and zero being the lowest, would you recommend this and other webinars, other Metro Atlanta land bank webinars to friends and colleagues? If you could just put that into the web, uh, just zero to 10. And we'll, we're recording all this. We'll capture your answers and kind of help us tabulate it. And then also if you have a reason why you basically put in your answer. So, you know, just please uh, put that in there and we will tabulate that. So we will give people a little bit of time to kind of go through and, and add that to the, um, oops, add that to the uh, chat box. And that would be great. I know we have 27 participants. So if we can get a few more, we will be uh, highly appreciative uh, to do that. So thank you, appreciate those coming in. So, so good, good, good. And I know that the world of land banks is a little murky to people. You know, it's not an everyday entity. People are more familiar with a housing authority or development authority as opposed to a land bank authority. But the point of these webinars is really to kind of give everybody a forum and our partners and interested people, you know, give us a chance to, um, to kind of dispel a lot of the mystery about land banks and tell you what we're doing and also let you know about opportunities that are going to be made available to, uh, to everyone out in the public. Uh, and so, so we like to um, like to do that. So, uh, and, and also, if you guys are interested in being on our contact list, you know, please do that. We do have an info at metroatlantalandbank.org. Send us your information. We'll make sure to put you in there, uh, and so we can keep in touch with you because we like to, uh, you know, we like to be in contact with folks. And the beauty now that we've all been on these digital platforms for the last year. So these are great easy ways for us to kind of talk and chat. You know, I'm running to a lot of meetings. Uh, when, we, when we get back into, you know, doing live meetings, I'll be running around, Terika runs around. So these are great opportunities for us to kind of have an easy way to sit down and talk to people virtually. So, uh, and you'll be able to meet Terika next time. So again, you know, please, please feel free to put your uh, information into the chat box. You know, please let us know, again, your zero to 10, and then also, you know, any reason why you may have felt that way. So now some people have answered the question or asked the question, um, how do you get in touch with us? Well, here are our respective emails. So you see my email for the, as the executive director. Uh, you'll see, oops, you'll see my direct office line there. Uh, if I don't pick up, please leave a message. Uh, we do have voicemails and I'm able to pick those up and we will respond. We have a main office line. You can go through our main office line. We do have a virtual direct, you know, uh, operator there. So it allows you to scroll through the directory and, and, and contact people via that main switch. Uh, you see Terika, Terika Black Bashir. Uh, you see her email address. You can email her directly. Uh, and then you have her direct office number also. So you should be able to track us down. Uh, we oftentimes, you know, sometimes folks want to try to get in touch with us uh, and they um, they may not get us on the first ring, but we ask for you to be, please be patient, you know, leave us a number. We're not a point of contact. We're not in the office right now. We are virtual still, uh, but as we move through this vaccine stage with COVID, we do anticipate at some point uh, we will we will be back in the office, but we we do try to be we tr try to be diligent and follow the folks when they leave messages and respond to emails. So I urge everyone to do that. Also, so um, let's see here. So we are doing this, and thanks for all your info in the chat box because this information will be captured in our um, this recording. So I think. We have exhausted all of the questions. 
And I think this is the last one. So I'm gonna go back into our chat box. I don't see any additional questions. And I'm gonna look in the Q&A one more time. And, and I don't see any more in the Q&A. So again, the, I think we've achieved what we wanted to do, which is again, spend a little bit of time in your lunch period. Uh, we do these once a month. Uh, we do have more uh, topics that are coming forward. It's gonna be the same time that fourth Monday at noon. Uh, and so we'll, we'll be doing this again uh, soon. So I just wanted to uh, make sure that you guys are, make sure you guys are on board. So, um, so as, as I part, if you wanna put anything in a chat box that we want to, you want for us to capture, you know, feel free to do that. Uh, before we sign off and it will be captured for us to um, to have. Uh, same for the Q&A box. But having said that, uh, I want to once again, on behalf of the staff and the board of directors of the Land Bank, and I say thank you. I want to say thank you to Reggie uh, Hammond, who is our uh, consultant and working on that, um, on this programming and other things associated with the Land Bank, thanks for him. And also thank you for taking time. I know everybody's busy. Thank you for taking time out of your day to, to spend some time with us and learn a little bit more about land banks and what we do and future opportunities coming forward. I urge you to go and just work around our website. You know, we have a lot of information. The website continues to evolve. We continue to add information. If you see stuff you would like for us to add, please let us know. We can take a look at maybe modifying some things or, or adding additional information. But also when we have future RFPs, RFQs, that type of stuff will be on the website. You'll be able to do that. And also, if you're interested in specific properties, feel free to just tool around on our, our, our website. You can see, once you drill down to those, those listings, you'll have a lot of information about properties, what's available, what's not available. And even some cases, you'll see property that we hold on behalf of partners like Invest Atlanta and other entities that may be informative to you also. So, uh, and the last question, yes, I am on LinkedIn, so feel free to to, to find me there. And speaking of LinkedIn, so the Land Bank is on social media platforms. So we have Facebook, we have Instagram, uh, we have a LinkedIn page. So if you wanna connect with us via those mediums, you can do that as well. So, all right. And last question, are there any RFPs, RFQs coming this month? There's nothing coming out this month. Uh, anything we do will probably be more in the June timeframe before anything hits the street for an RFP, RFQ for property. There'll be vendor RFPs probably coming out before that, but not any property. So, oh yes, and as Danielle pointed out, we also have YouTube, so I forgot. We are highly sophisticated and fully embracing the social media-ness of the world. And so we are, we are out there in multiple, multiple platforms. So, well, once again, thank you for joining. Uh, and this will be published to our website. And for the first two that you may have missed, uh, those are on our website as well. So at this point in time, uh, we are going to say thank you and we will end the, uh, end the presentation. Thank you. Now I'll turn it to Reggie to drive from here. Or I may have to end it myself. All right. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, at this point, we will end the webinar.